Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part two of Revelation chapter 12 revealed. This is going to be the war, Satan's war, the war in heaven. All right, Revelation 12 and verse 4. And his tail drew, whose tail? Satan. If you watched part, if you listen to part one, you'll know that the uh, dragon is Satan. The stars of heaven are the fallen angels. Well, they're angels. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this from the rest of the Bible. All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew, his, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Not a sacrifice, but an offering. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. I don't know how true it is, I'm just bringing this up, but uh, somebody once pointed out, I think I read it in I don't know, I read it in some writing somewhere that uh, there was actually a devil spirit named Sin. Hmm. Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Hmm. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Hmm. Okay. And the Lord said unto Cain, just like a prosecuting attorney getting ready to ask a question, already know the answer to. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So, the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand? Keep that in mind, the earth opening her mouth. Verse 12, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. What group of people do you know that are never farmers, that are fugitives, were fugitives and vagabonds, always never had a, a place of their own? until the United Nations created a place for him in 1948. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. All right, so... In the previous study we did, Genesis 3, uh, Satan, B, 
beguiled Eve, right? So when was Satan cast out of heaven? Is it future like in Revelation or was it past? I don't know. Let's take a look. All right, war in heaven. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So, you know, it, it's you could use either name interchangeably. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall make them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of rulers. Uh, just remember something. Babylon took Judah into captivity for her sin against the Lord. You can read about that in the book of Daniel. And then they returned. You can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. Okay. And uh, let's see. Verse 5. He, or 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sang, since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. A feller is, a, you know, somebody that chops down trees, right? Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. Uh, that's an instrument, musical instrument. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou fallen? From heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now, you know, it's interesting. They were talking about the king of Babylon, and now they're talking about a being that they call Lucifer. Lucifer is a Latin word. It has reference to light. Perhaps you've heard of lumen, illuminate. Um, that's where you, it means a measurement of light. How many lumens? Look on a light bulb package. It'll say how many lumens it has. Lucifer just basically means bearer of light. It's a Latin word. 20 to 25 percent of English is derived from Latin words. So when you hear some idiot named James White telling you that Lucifer is an improper translation of word, um, well, he's, an, he's a satanic idiot. And I'm being quite kind, believe me. Um, a lot of the newer Bibles will say, instead of delete the word Lucifer, and they'll insert, insert the word morning star. So it'll read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the morning? And it you know, describes how he's going down the, the grave to be covered with the worms, and he fell from heaven. But then when you read in Revelation 22, you read where Jesus says, he is the morning star. So the NIV and the complete Jewish Bible are in complete agreement that uh, Jesus, Yeshua, the morning star, in Isaiah 14, fell from heaven and is going to the grave to be covered with worms. 
Or you can believe the King James Bible. It says Lucifer fell from heaven. And if you talk to Satanists and Luciferians, they know full well who Lucifer is. It's only idiots like James White that doesn't know who Lucifer is. Satanists know who they worship. And, and they know what Lucifer, who, who he is. And it's not Jesus. Isaiah 14, 12. Oh, and by the way, the largest English publisher of Bibles is Zondervan. And they're the printer of the NIV Bible. And their parent company, HarperCollins, prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. They're the ones that removes Lucifer and inserts Morningstar, which is a name Jesus calls himself in Revelation 22. So figure out, do you think Lucifer fell from heaven or do you think Jesus fell from heaven? Hmm. Pretty tough choice, huh? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Who are the stars? The angels. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down, to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Is it any coincidence that cities are full of wickedness? No. Verse 22. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant, and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. A besom is a type of broom. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations." For the Lord of hosts have purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and its fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou, whole Palestina, art dissolved. For there shall come from the earth a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation, that the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it? Turn to Ezekiel. All right, Ezekiel chapter 28. Listen carefully. So, in Revelation chapter 12, it talks about the war in heaven. 
you know, but I, you know, I read Genesis chapter three, Satan deceiving Eve. And you, I kind of think my opinion is the war was, uh, in revelation is past. I think it was looking back. So let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's see what it says. Ezekiel is one of those most neglected books in the Bible. It is Old Testament. This book is at least 3,000 years old. Verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, thou hast said, I am a God, and I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By the great wisdom and by thy traffic thou hast increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, Therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, and terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Didn't we just read about Lucifer, brightness? They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before them that, that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and O God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Okay, is this talking about the actual human king of Tyrus or the power behind the king of Tyrus? Listen carefully. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, who is in the garden of God? Adam, Eve, and the serpent, right? Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Who was created? The angels. And Adam. But the king of Tyrus, if he was human, he was born. Right? So this is obviously talking about Satan. In the day that thou wast created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's a, it's a type of angelic being. It covered, he covered the throne of God. Do you know the mercy seat? The Ark of the Covenant? You know, you, you have those two angels with their wings facing each other. One of those was Lucifer, I think. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect. In thy ways, from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity, or sin, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Violence. War in heaven, people. They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. 
thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Ooh, didn't the Lord say he was going to devour the earth with fire? Ooh. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. All right, and the rest of it is uh, speaking of something different. So, we get the idea? Let's go back to Revelation chapter 1. All right, chapter, uh, Revelation 12, 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So let's take a look at the days when Christ was born. We looked at Cain and Abel. Let's take a look at Christ. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. We're going to read about King Herod and his solution to Christ. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. See, these men were wise because they seek would seek the Lord, the Christ child, saying, Where is he that is born? king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Oh yeah, because if there's a king, what is Herod going to be? Well, Herod's the king now, but uh, he doesn't want to be dethroned, so he's got a solution coming up. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You know, in Genesis 35 and verse 19, Rachel, who was one of the uh, the beloved of Jacob Israel, it says, and, J and Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. So Rachel, the mother of part of Israel, she was buried in Bethlehem. All right, so let's take a look. If you read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, you'll see that David, King David's father, Jesse, he was from Bethlehem, too. So, uh, let's see. Let's see, first, and then 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. Now, David was the son of that Ephraimite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man, the days of Saul. Verse 15, But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Uh, let's see, 1 Samuel 17, 58. And Saul said unto him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. Okay. All right, that prophecy that they just read is from the book of Micah. It's one of the minor prophets. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee 
shall come he, shall he, I'm sorry, out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now, how can somebody be of old from everlasting? I mean, you know, Christ is from everlasting. Uh, when you read Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us, well, that's what Christ was. He was God with us. From old, from everlasting. You know, he, he might have been born in a human body, but he was God come in the flesh. And of course, a lot of the oneness people will will argue that point. And uh, they try to make you think that, you know, the uh, Godhead is not true, that Jesus is just a created being. But that's not true. Whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. There you go. All right, back to Matthew chapter 2. All right, um, Matthew 2 and verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had pri privily called the wise men, he called them privately, right? Inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go! And search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Oh yeah. Yeah, bring yeah. Tell me where the kid is. Because I got a I got a plan for him. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. He was angry. He was P.O.'d. And sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying, that's Jeremiah, by the way. That's the Greek rendering of Jeremiah. In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. I mean, they're not alive. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead, which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Sounds like that Herod family is a really bad bunch of people, huh? Well, guess what? According to a Jewish historian named Josephus, Herod was of the children of Esau, Edom. 
And if you want to read how God felt about Esau, you should read Malachi chapter 1. It said that God hated Esau. So I wonder why. Yeah, you don't want your kingship to be taken over by somebody else? Just slaughter all the babies, right? No problem. I'm sure he thought nothing of it, too. God has a place for people like this. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that he might be, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Hmm. All right. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 12, verse 4. And his tail, the dragon, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Well, let's read that. So is Christ taken up into heaven? Let's read the book of Acts, chapter 1. 1-1. One, one. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost was given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He was taken up. He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, obviously angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. So, all right, so uh, Jesus was taken up, right? Oh, yeah. All right, Revelation 12 and verse 5. So, and she brought forth a man-child, Mary, Eve, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared to God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. So the woman, and some people will argue with me and tell me that, you know, sometimes they'll say the woman's the church, sometimes they'll say the woman is Israel, but I say it's both. I say the woman is Israel, and I say the woman is the church. So 
So if the church is here, there she's going to have to flee into the wilderness. Verse 7. Uh, 1,203 score days is roughly 42 months. It's three and a half years, basically, people. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Didn't we just read, uh, didn't I just read not too long ago about um, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, and oh yeah, I think this was past. Some people would say it was, it's going to be future, but I think it was past. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's you, that's me, that's all of us, to some to more of a degree than others. I would like to think that I'm just deceived a little bit. Some people are almost totally deceived. Like the Mormons, they believe that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Would you want Satan's brother as your savior? Uh, I'll pass. And then you got the Jehovah's Witnesses that think um, Jesus is Michael, the angel here that fought against Satan. Uh, I don't think so, but what can I tell you? Of course, they've uh, said the end of the world about at least three or four different times. They said the world was going to end in 1976, that Jesus is coming back. But And then after they... Uh, the world's still here. They says, well, he came secretly in men's hearts. Well, you know, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, 1, didn't we, uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, didn't we just read where said that Jesus would be coming in the like manner? Everybody, you know, they'd see him in the clouds. So how can he come secretly? Ah, uh, uh, what can I tell you? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast out, which accused them before our God day and night. Let's read about the accuser. Let's take a look at some of Satan's devices. Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua. Some people would pronounce it Yeshua. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Filthy garments. Keep that in mind. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity, your sin, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. In other words, it's going to give you a change of clothing. Think about that when you read about those, uh, when the Lord gives people uh, a change of gar uh, clothing. You know, doesn't the, uh, the Bible talk about the at the wedding feast, people have on a wedding garment? Marriage supper of the Lamb. Doesn't he give them uh, white raiment, clothing? Raiment just means clothing. Verse 5. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If, if, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, 
and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Hmm, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. You know, it's funny. Israel's uh, was likened unto the uh, an ol uh, sometimes the olive, sometimes the grapes. Um, you know, and the grapes are, are vines. But the fig tree, that was Judah. And Israel and Judah were not the same. So the vine was like grapes and represented Israel, and then the fig tree represented Judah. So it says, Shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree? Eventually, Judah and Israel will become one. So, Satan is the accuser. Back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. But the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. So what is this new garment that they're going to give? Well, Revelation 3, verse 5. He that overcometh. See, you got to overcome. You just, you know, let's face it. Even Satan believes in God. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Ooh, did you know, according to the way I read this, your name could be blotted out of the book of life? That don't sound good. Verse 18, Revelation 3.18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Revelation 4.4. 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Uh, let's see, Matthew 17, verse 2. Remember the transfiguration of Jesus? And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Matthew 28, 3. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. Mark 9, 3. And his raiment became shining, shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. Luke 9.29 And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. So you definitely want that. So do I. All right, let's take a look at uh, something else. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 1. We're going to read quite a bit of this. So, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. God the Father, right? The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. His son's Jesus, who is the Christ, right? The son of God. And who's he going to be married to? The bride is the church, right? 
and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king, but when the king, uh, so here it is, he sends his servants to, to invite the people to the wedding. What do they do? They kill them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. But those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good, the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Ooh, he didn't have on a wedding garment. He didn't have the white raiment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. All right, back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. What does that mean? Let's take a look. All right, Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 27. Jesus speaking. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them, fear not them, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather... Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Um, those of you that are bald, those guys of you that are bald, yeah, maybe you don't need much counting. Well, never mind. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Do you get that? He that loses his life for the sake of Christ, you will find eternal life. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. 
He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. You get that? I hope so. All right. Um, should we take another look at this? Luke 12 and verse 8, parallel passage. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they shall bring you to, unto the synagogues, hmm, why would he say that, synagogues? And when they shall bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour, what ye ought to say. So in other words, when they're getting ready to kill you, don't think about what you're going to say, because the Lord, the Holy Ghost is going to speak right through you. So, here we go, Mark 8, verse 35. Jesus, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his like for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. All right, back to uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they, verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, I just did a two or three part Bible study on, on the wings of eagle, where I cover this pretty in depth, more in depth. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times, two years, and half a time, that's half a year, so that's three and a half years. That's basically, um, uh, one spot it says 42 months, another spot it says 1,260 days. It's all the same. Three and a half years is 42 months, which is 12, 1260 days. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that she that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. This is going to be the next major lesson that I'm going to do. I'm going to close it out right here because the flood of the dragon. I kind of mentioned on it in the wings of eagle, but I'm going to go into it in depth. The Bible says an awful lot about the flood of the dragon. If you don't know what the flood of the dragon is, take a look at what's happening in America with all the immigration, and take a look at Europe. Same thing. The flood of the dragon. All right, well, this is uh, part two, War in Heaven. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All glory and honor to him, in Jesus' name.